Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. I am Fusion Phil here with JITCAD Camp. First off, I want to thank all of you that are returning subscribers that like my content and leave the lovely comments down below about how bad my spelling is. I'm well aware there's a reason I'm a machinist and not an English teacher. That being said, if you're new to my channel, we actually build our content around real world scenarios. And these Workflow Wednesday series is built out for unique workflows that most people don't understand or have never thought of until you're a multi-year expert of Fusion like myself. Now, let's go ahead and dive into this. But before I dive into it, I do want to explain to you what we're kind of looking at. So as the title says, we are looking at facing operations inside of Fusion. We're going to go ahead and do this based on a setup to scenario. So what I like to say is we're removing the hat today. So as you can see on this part that I've already got built out, the hat is already created because we've done nothing more than a roughing operation in setup one. Now, I do want to explain to everybody that there is a couple of preparatorial things that you're going to want to do. And one of those is, is I like to create a actual component with my stock box for what we're going to machine. And the reason for that is, is in the world, when you start to get into the four and five axis type stuff, you're going to need a stock box in order to generate you know, your tool paths, your continuous rust machining, your jigs and fixtures. So it's a good habit to start to get into as we progress. So that has already been done for us. If you guys want to see how that's done, I actually do that in some of my jigs and fixture videos. And I've already created that setup one. And let's go ahead and review this with the actual stock from solid. Now, you can see in a real time scenario, we're creating that hat, right? Maybe if I look at this a little bit more from the side. So the hat tends to be the most pain in the ass part, in my opinion, to remove on a part because you're either going to fling material or you risk grabbing onto it, pulling the part out of the vise, pulling the tool out of the tool holder, breaking a actual tool as your machine. So let's create our setup too. So as you can see, I actually luck out my XYZ is correct. Model to which we are machining is not the actual stock there, but it's going to be this part. We are using continuous rest machining as we go through this process, and we're going to go ahead and hit our OK button. So as you can see, because of my continuous rest machining and selecting the same part across both setups, that actual material has come through. I've also done a video on this last a couple of weeks ago, reviewing how to actually set up your jigs and fixtures for machining. But now let's start with the traditional facing, right? So most of you, if you're actually been in the software, you commonly go up here to 2D, you grab a facing cycle, and I'm going to pull a half or the two inch shell mill in, allowing me to face off this part. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F7. F7 turns on and turns off your toolpath if you weren't aware. F8 actually toggles your stock as well. So as you can see, we're coming across our part and we're facing off that hat. Now, if I was to go in and I was to simulate this, what you're going to notice is going to happen is we're coming across. And we're going to get that chatter and that deflection and that ringing kind of sound as we come across that part. And now we're going to come back the other way, of course. And as you're going to see is we're going to get to a point where we start to fling material off. And as you see here, this entire chunk of the part is going to be hanging out in space, making a ton of noise. And then on our final pass coming back the other way, we've actually broke that part loose. So it's either going to drop or it's going to get sucked up in our tool. This is why traditionally on a second setup, as I like to say, or flipping the part over, removing the hat, as I said before, I prefer to actually do things a little different. Now, for again, for those of you that are still kind of new to Fusion 360, we could always go into this facing cycle and there's a lot of things you can do at the end of the day. So one thing is, is you could actually say from other side, which would mean we are gonna go backwards through this part. So again, as if we were to simulate this, let's go ahead and pull up our simulation. As we came across that part, again, probably tons of chatter right there, coming back the other way, not so much. Next pass seems to be okay. And as you're seeing, once again, we're getting stuck so far out into that space that boom, there's that corner that just fell off of our part, shot into the corner. We've been there, we've seen it. It scares a lot of people, especially when you're getting into some serious machining. Now, again, the idea is, is how can we eliminate this for our workflow? Well, the neat thing is, is we can actually use different tool paths. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that mindset of 2D is the way to always go. And that's not necessarily true because in the world of 3D, we have a lot of things that we can actually do 
to remove the hat and then maybe face it. Again, on this part, we don't really need to face it, but this workflow stays true whether you're doing, you know, a lower receiver as you see in front of you or an electronics enclosure or any type of rectangular simple part. Again, I do some bars for a customer and again, it shoots that part into the corner, shoots the part into the glass, it can cause other problems. So the very first one I'm gonna go for is, I'm actually gonna go into 3D now. Now in 3D, I think a lot of people have thought to themselves, how can I use you know, maybe adaptive clearing or pocket clearing to face off the part? And we're gonna go ahead and do that right off the start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on adaptive clearing. I'm gonna go, I could leave the two inch mill, but I think it's much better for us in this case to use the half inch flat. And you'll see why is it'll give you a little more detail on what the actual tool path looks like. Now, for all of you at this point, we do have stock definition in our roughing cycles. So we are looking back at that stock, which is gonna make our life much easier. Now, from a heights situation, now I'm going to leave everything standard inside of this actual toolpath because I would like to show you in a scenario where we actually have a lot of profiling on a part or different heights and different areas to work with, what's gonna happen when we flip that part over. Now, as you're seeing, We've already faced off the hat, which is interfering with this toolpath. So what I need to do is I need to delete the hat and regenerate my toolpath. Now, while that's calculating, it does give me a chance to tell you guys is we did cross a thousand subscribers. We are giving away a commercial license of Fusion 360. So if you're looking for either a commercial license of Fusion, which comes with our top tier support, or entered into the few other things that we're giving away for a thousand subscribers, use the link down below to sign up. Our drawing is gonna be held at the end of July, and we are gonna announce those actual users live if they give consent, of course. But now that the tool path is done, you're gonna notice that we're getting a lot of problems and a lot of interference, right? So although we have the rest machining turned on, we're going way down past the bottom of our part. We're even looking at from previous operations. Again, this is something that we have the ability to control, turn up, turn down, I will say if we wanted to, we could actually cheat the system. And you're gonna see me use model top a little bit later. And I might stay above model top a little bit, but as you can see, just by using 3D adaptive clearing and going to model top, we could actually take the hat off of our part, right? So this is a good way to do it. And now I've heard a lot of customers complain about this. And I've seen it personally, I'm not getting it necessarily on this part, but it usually leaves something in the middle, right? Because this is a roughing strategy, so it's not meant to be precise. And if we were to simulate this, I think you guys will see here once we get to the middle, granted this isn't a very big cut at the end of the day. Let's go ahead and just hit play to get there. And you know one other thing, here's another pro tip for a lot of you guys. If we look at all tool paths, we could actually jump to a point in our tool path and then we can work with that at the end of the day to see what's going on. So again, as you're seeing, as we're facing off this last little section, it might be a little tricky to see for you guys out there. So let's go ahead and turn our stock on so it's not transparent. That's a little better. So this last little nub that we're taking, you can see is kind of all over the place. Again, we don't have straight, beautiful lines when we're doing this. We are taking off that hat, which is nice but the problem still relies the same. So in this case, I still have a hat. And the reason why I have a hat is because I didn't rough it far enough from the backside. But I wanted to make that point clear that you could use adaptive clearing to remove that material. Working from the outside in is kind of the strategy you wanna go for, making sure that we're not flinging parts and having any issues with that raw material that we're taking off. Now, a few other strategies that I actually prefer is I actually would go up and I would look at something, and again, is depending on what this customer wants for like a pattern on the bottom of the part, the pretty side of it. Again, this part isn't the best of example because we're gonna do other machining at a lower depth. However, because of the outside profile of this part is why I chose it. So let's go look at a few other things. So another toolpath I'm gonna look at is called Spiral. Now, a lot of you have known that you can use horizontal or flat also for scenarios like this. Again, my idea is to remove the hat and then come back with a different strategy to actually finish. And that's where I would use horizontal or flat. Now, as you're seeing here, what I'm getting asked for spiral is a center point. So I do need to send a center point for this tool path. Now, again, what I wanna do is I am actually gonna use a selected boundary. 
And this is why you're seeing firsthand why we created that stock, right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the tool on center or I'm gonna start the tool outside of that boundary so that I can work outside in. And then we're only gonna machine to model top. And as you're gonna see is we're gonna get a little bit of a different strategy here. Again, I'm missing something because we still have contact only turned on. So let's go ahead and turn off contact only. So this is gonna seem counterproductive to a lot of you because you're so used to turning things on versus turning things off. But as you can see, this is gonna give us a nice kind of strategy that is always gonna arc off that center point, right? So based on the center point of what we're doing, we're completing these loops all the way around and we're working outside to in, slowly removing that material to ensure things like chatter doesn't happen or anything of that nature. As you can see, we're also working inside out so we can reverse that direction as well to prevent that chucking of the parts. And you're seeing this again is we would probably chuck off pieces on the corner starting from that inside out kind of scenario. So we would wanna reverse that at the end of the day to be able to clean it up. So again, we can go back into our tool path. We could actually say, you know, link from inside to outside. There's a lot of ways to control what's going on. So we can reverse that in our tool path. Hey guys, I had to crop this in real quick because I was having a brain fart while making these videos and it occurred to me after the fact is when you wanna do that outside in or inside out on some of these tool paths, all you need to do is you need to change your direction to either outside in or inside out. As you've heard me mention multiple times but not seen the results on the screen and I always get the best of amounts of emails telling me, hey, this, that, or the other, here's the quick fix to that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now back to the other content. Now I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna go to another tool path that's very common. Now I prefer the morphed spiral in my opinion. This is a little better strategy and the reason why is one, I never see people use morph spiral, but this is a good example in a scenario where I like to use it. So same rules basically apply. We're gonna go with a selected boundary. Selected boundary is our stock box. Turn off our contact only. We only wanna machine down to our model top and away we go, right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what you're gonna notice is again, we're going to start with a strategy that is going to work either inside out or outside in, removing that hat. Now, some of you are gonna think that this works very, very familiar to our adaptive clearing that we did, and you're correct, right? So it is very similar. The reason why both of these strategies are similar is they're both working in a to to from scenario and kind of chasing that profile to its maximum efficiency, right? So one thing I would need to do here is if I go back into this tool path, we're probably gonna make you know a 400 step over based on this part, just because it's a little bit more of aggressive bite and there's not a massive hat there. But as you guys are seeing is you can control this in any way, in any fashion, giving you much more to work with. Again, we could say tool outside a boundary. We could go ahead and go the opposite direction. A lot of things here to be able to open up this part or to machine off this hat without ever touching anything. Shouldn't say without touching anything, without throwing the corners off the part, right? So another strategy that I've commonly seen come in very handy is this time we're gonna just go ahead and derive it so we don't have to keep picking things. But I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look at a actual, where is it, parallel tool path. Again, if you guys have never done that right click derive move, it's gonna bring everything from one tool path over into the next one, making your lives much easier. Things like that model top that we've defined. We could also do our step over pulls through automatically, all of it, right? So again, why I like these different tool paths is because I can get different strategies or different ways to go about machining this part and taking off that material, right? So removing the hat sometimes requires thinking outside the box. Now I've seen guys do a 2D profile around the part, again, leaving drops in the corner. Now that's up to you guys whether or not you do that. Sometimes that becomes unsafe. That all comes down to the end user and how they plan to do this part more than anything. I'm just here to give you a couple of different tools in your toolbox for how to approach scenarios like this to make your life much easier and to lower that risk, right? So. As you can see, we can go through and we can actually use just about any tool path inside of the 3D area. Again, we did a spiral, you could do radial, I wouldn't recommend radial, just because it's gonna go inside out from that center point of control, kind of like spiral did. But at the end of the day, the idea is still the same. How can we remove the hat 
and not risk breaking our tool. And again, I've seen it where, you know, you come in with that 2D adaptive clearing and that last path either leaves like a shark fin or it's a heavy cut or it's still flinging material, risking pulling apart out of the vise where something like a spiral tool path or even a morphed spiral tool path can change that entire scenario, allowing you to actually face off that part with less risk inside of what's going on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to thank you guys all as always. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, and subscribe to our channel. As you can see, we're giving away some great content, or not, we are giving away our content. You know, I get questions about this stuff all the time. I'm almost sick of answering it back in email. That's why we make these videos. But we're also giving away a Fusion license and some of our support, as well as some free training to any and everyone out there that has subscribed to our channel. I know there's been some questions about people outside of the United States. Feel free to still sign up. I just hope you don't email me at 2 a.m. expecting a response, but I am here for you guys to help in any way I can.